Deuced for far off the is that it? Hello, uh, I'm Dr. Gates. I'm a board certified chiropractic neurologist. This is Dr. Rutherford. He is a certified functional medicine practitioner. And today we're talking about statin induced peripheral yeah, neuropathy. About that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we just decided that 30 seconds ago. <laughs> <laughs> no, we've we've been planning for this, but this is an exciting subject. I'm going to let Dr. Rutherford speak for a little while because you usually do the initial consultations. You encounter a lot of patients with peripheral neuropathy who come in here and have questions about statins yeah. relative to the issue of self. Yeah, the statin drugs, I mean, it, I'm just, this has been a topic for us forever. Um, the statin drugs are quite controversial right now, in our opinion, quite justifiably so. Um, I don't, it, it, the, the medical model and the medical doctors are, I, I just heard this morning, I just heard this morning on the news where the uh, FDA came out and said maybe it's not a good idea to take aspirin every day. And immediately there was a retort from the AMA saying don't stop taking the aspirin, you know, ask your doctor first and so on and so forth. And this is because the side effects of taking an aspirin every day are significant. We'll do another five minutes or ten minutes on that at some point in time. The statins uh, are at least that controversial, if not like a hundred times more. And statins are, are um, known to the, it's, it's getting out into the media and onto the internet that statins can cause peripheral neuropathy. And there's controversy over that. Well, there should be no controversy over it. Statin drugs damage cell walls of the muscles, it, it kills CoQ10. And it, uh, there's a lot of things that statin drugs do. And one of the things that can happen is, you can get peripheropathy. So when, when a patient comes in, w one of the strengths of success of treatment of peripheropathy is to figure out which one of the 80 different things, and there are 80 according to the um, Neurological Contemporary Series that's put out by the AMA every four years for their neurologists and for their neurosurgeons, um, they list 80 different problems. Statin drugs uh, whether it's listed in there or not, I can't remember, but statin drugs is definitely one of them, and, and doctors are, have become fairly aware of that. So in our interviews with patients, we try to determine, first of all, is this patient, is, is this a good selected patient for the types of procedures that we use, and one of the things is for us to do a very thorough history. In that history, if we see a statin drug down, if I see a statin drug written down, the next question is always, when did you start taking it? Uh, two years ago. The next question is, when did you get the peripheral neuropathy? <laughs> well, you know, right after that. <laughs> Ding! You know, now they might say 10 years ago, and now it kind of goes down on the list as a, as, as a potential. It's not always going to cause peripheral neuropathy, but I'm going to let Dr. Gates get into that. So statins clearly can be involved in, um, in creating your and causing your peripheral neuropathy a certain percentage of the time, and I'll let you take it from there. Yeah, absolutely, and it's a very interesting topic. Uh, the statistics vary, but the landmark study came from a gentleman by the name of Geist, and he published in the Journal of Neurology in 2002, where he looked at the prevalence of peripheral neuropathy and the prevalence of people taking statins, and the odds, so to speak, of them developing a peripheral neuropathy secondary to a statin, and he came up with some staggering numbers. Basically, there's a four times to 14 times increased chance of developing peripheral neuropathy when that's taking a statin. Keep in mind, that's a 400 to 1400% increased chance, which, you know, lots of times when we look at smoking relative to cancer, you know, these are maybe a 1.3 or three times increased chance, 14 times increased chance of developing peripheral neuropathy is just amazing in terms of a, a predictor. Uh, the original studies were regarding Lipitor, and they have seen that if you switch from Lipitor to another statin medication, it really doesn't help. Um, and lots of times if you catch this early, you can go off the statin medication, and the side effects will lots of times go away. But if you don't catch it early and you stay on the statin medication, you don't know why you have peripheral neuropathy, it can be harder to regain that function, and more importantly for you, get rid of your symptoms. They're saying that the statins pose such a problem to peripheral neuropathy patients because it depletes the nerves of CoQ10, which is an important factor, as well as some other uh, substrates that are needed for the insulation around the nerves to work well. Also know that the statistics vary in terms of how prevalent the statin-induced neuropathies are. Some say 10 per 
10,000. Other studies say 60 for 10,000, which you may not think is that high. So 60 people taking statins out of 10,000 taking statins will develop peripheral neuropathy. You may say, well, that's not that much. But as Dr. Rutherford was alluded to, or alluding to, it's now becoming a recommendation that everybody be on a statin. Right. In essence, they're now going away from cholesterol numbers uh, being the high value, and then you give a person statins more if you have all the risk factors of being obese, and you know you eat the standard American diet, and you have a history of high cholesterol. Well, we're just going to give you a statin no matter what your. Well, it's a are problem now. because relative to those numbers, um, I, when I got out of school, which was in the late 70s, uh, high cholesterol was considered to be 275. Those of you who may be conversant with cholesterol numbers, which seems to be everybody walks in here, people would rather know what their cholesterol number is than their blood sugar number. We are so <laughs> sensitized to it. Uh, now it's 200. Now we've seen labs where it's 175, and I've seen suggestions where they want to consider high cholesterol 150, one, over 150. That's insanity. I mean, I don't mean to be controversial. I'm just telling you that biochemically, you can't make you can't make hormones with 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 a lack of cholesterol. Cholesterol makes your hormones. Cholesterol makes those cell walls that are being damaged around the nerves. Cholesterol helps to make um, cholesterol is fifty percent of what makes your brain work. It's it, it it helps the nerves to conduct and, and so on and so forth. So um, so there's a, what the point is is there's a lot more statins being taken out there. It's still a standard recommendation. Certainly if you've had any type of a coronary uh, issue, it's a standard recommendation. So it, I mean, I mean, we see, I, I don't know what the percentage of our patients coming in that, that are taking statins are, but it's high. It is high, and you know, that's where the rubber meets the road. Mm -hmm. Basically, as I mentioned, the prevalence regarding how many people taking statins develop peripheral neuropathy vary. Um, a lot of these articles that I have here, they'll cite that there's a lot of pushback from doctors to even want to acknowledge this because the overwhelming effects and positive effects of statins greatly outweighs the, the side effects of developing something like peripheral neuropathy. However, clinically, we see the relationship occur very commonly. And so medication-induced peripheral neuropathies are quoted at 2 to 4% uh, as being the cause of peripheral neuropathy out of the 80 different causes. But we see this pretty commonly, and you know, we referenced that journal, Neurology 2002, by the author Gase. If you have any questions, you can look that up or contact us. But it, it's, a, it's an issue. Uh, it needs to be addressed, especially if you have idiopathic peripheral neuropathy where you don't know what the cause is. And especially if you took, started taking the statin drug and your peripheral neuropathy showed up shortly afterwards, shortly being right. anywhere from a couple of days to a couple of months mm -hmm. afterwards. Exactly. That you can forget the two to four percentages there's a good chance that it's causing a year of peripheral neuropathy. Or a large factor associated with it. Or a large factor. Three other factors that can yeah. be contributing as well. So if you have any other questions, go to powerhealthtalk.com. We have many other videos on neuropathy and, and gluten and other health conditions there. And also know that when we address a patient with statin neuropathy, we look at, okay, can we get the person off of statin? We work with their medical doctor. I've worked with a number of cardiologists on this issue, yeah. as well as working with them to stimulate the nerves. We try and shock the nerves back into life. And if we can eliminate the cause, in this case the statin, and shock the nerves back into life and replace the factors that were missing in the nerves because of the statins, we see a wonderful union where lots of times patients can get better when they yeah. thought they couldn't. So the takeaway from that comment is you may get off the statin and your peripheral neuropathy may go, not go away. It doesn't mean it didn't cause it. It means that other there are other factors or those nerves may need to be stimulated back to life, if you will. Yeah. So um, so I think that's pretty much conversation. I think that's pretty conclusive. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for watching. Again, go to powerhealthtalk.com for okay. any other questions.